The Los Angeles Rams are finalizing a trade to send Jalen Ramsey to the Miami Dolphins. It's Jimmy Garoppolo headed to the Las Vegas Raiders. The Carolina Panthers are moving all the way from number nine to the number one overall selection. Chris Lindstrom was not slated to be a free agent, but the Falcons said now is the time for us to do a big extension. Johnny Smith has been traded to the Atlanta Falcons. David Onyemata winds up with the Atlanta Falcons. Jesse Bates is going to the Falcons. The Baltimore Ravens just announced that they have released wow. Javon Hargrave. He is going to the San Francisco 49ers. The Broncos are signing Ben Powers. Mike Bunglinch is signing a deal with the Denver Broncos. <laughs> Jawan Taylor now heads to Kansas City. Jason Kelsey has announced on Twitter that he plans to return. The Chicago Bears, they are signing Tremaine Edmonds. What is Aaron happening? Rogers, of course, is on his own time schedule. He is on his own time frame. And we are just going to sit here and wait until he decides to do what he's going to do. From the Chris Wessling Podcast Studio, it's around the NFL free agency <laughs> frenzy edition. Dan Hans is here with Mark Sessler, Greg Rosenthal, and the great Colleen Wolf. They, they have stripped the need for us to literally do the show. They yeah, just announced just about to, everything I was, that's happened. I figured we just talk for five minutes and then We're just out. get out of here. A little bit of a life hack there. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be uh, tough to top Jonu Smith getting into the rundown right there at the top of the show as the biggest upset of the season. Sizzle for a seventh round pick. Into the top Can't of the top show that. he goes. Don't have to talk about it now. Former Titan. Now I get it. Uh, welcome. There it is. Welcome, welcome, welcome to a big week on the NFL calendar. The uh, the tampering period has begun. Started at 1 p.m. Eastern today. Was it? Was it at 1? I think they call it the negotiating four, period. Four, four They're four trying Eastern to get maybe? rid of four the uh, yeah. legal tampering nomenclature. Ah, very nice. Very nice. Well, nomenclature? Very nice. No, I, I said it nomenclature. wrong. Nomenclature. Yeah, now you said it wrong, too. One Eastern, actually. One Eastern, it was, it was one Eastern. When I rolled in minutes Twelve after. 12 Eastern. 12 Eastern. In, in Nine fact. Pacific. <laughs> and we have been tracking it uh, for hours and hours. And Obviously. You heard that at the end, the, the Aaron Rodgers of it all. Uh, despite it seeming like it's a thing that's going to happen between the Jets and Aaron Rodgers and the Packers moving forward as we're taping right now, that's not official. But it feels like it's going to happen. I'm not even – I don't even care. It's like, oh, Dan, why are you even saying that? You're going to jinx it. If it's not going to happen, that's fine too, honestly. We're going to pivot and figure something out as Jets fans uh, because if, if this turns out to be Aaron Rodgers hasn't made a decision yet and he sent both of these teams into free agency – uh, without knowing the plan for Rodgers, if he ends up chickening out and retiring or whatever or forcing his way back to the Packers, have fun. I'll deal with that. But it's just amazing that we couldn't just get the news and have it part of the show. But this is part of the Rodgers experience. It is. It's a, he specializes um, in this type of um, March drama. And, I mean, just to be real – we were, you know, we care about the news in itself, and there's a Jets angle to it um, with you, Dan, for our show. So it was like all weekend long, it was like, if this thing happens, wherever you are in your weekend plans, if you're with children or uh, wherever, you were going to be dropping what you're doing to talk about Aaron Rodgers. And so I just, like, it kind of created this uh, weekend long tension where it's mm. like, when does um, Mark pursue his own activities? When do I pursue my own right. passions? Did and you actually not do anything you intended to do? I would this absolutely say that that is that is the case. He gave some yeah. examples. And Let's I hear believe Wow. Well, I would just say it's a Saturday afternoon. Like, what if I want to go do things Berry around picking. the city? That would be, you know, yes. Mark esque uh, or something that, that <laughs> someone my age would want to go do. It's like you you have to sit around and wait to find out if this guy is going to join the Jets. He's Mark making is a sacrifices. Pro. He was trying yeah. to stay as you know. Clean and sober as Clear possible. Headed. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know. The, so like, Aaron Rodgers, in a way, promoting healthy living. Mm -hmm. I guess. But I really appreciated, you know, there were a couple times when Graver sort of stepped in and said, well, I need to be at a, like an Oscars party at right. 4 p.m. on Sunday, providing a clear cutoff. And then, you know, we don't have to deal that with this. That was the only thing that was made clear by anyone over the weekend. Graver was like, I'm hosting an Oscars party. <laughs> wow. So FYI, Sunday from about 3 p.m. Pacific onward is not going to work. Right. And we had no choice. We were hamstrung. Oh, we would have made we would have made him do it, or, or found someone that could. I could have dropped everything for that. How about Greg? Greg on Saturday was just like, "I'm out Saturday." Sorry, oh, yeah, I was out. I, I, I appreciated I mean, I was, that. Well, so. I had a hotel room going to uh, Indian Wells uh, to watch the tennis. Uh, right, which know, was do fine. That, do it's that every okay. year. I, I wasn't staying. It's okay home. to have a life. I had Keith Hansis on retainer 
if the Rodgers thing happened over the weekend. We would have knocked out some type of reaction show and then hit it harder today. But going back to the main point, we're still waiting. So that's if it I for now. I thought that maybe it was going to happen once I saw all of the Jets players tweeting. Garrett Wilson, I can finally enjoy my vacay now. He said, y'all should see the smile right now that I have on my face. I think Sauce Gardner tweeted something yeah, out as well. Yeah, it's like a tipping point. And uh-huh. then, uh, then no. Apparently well, not. I, I was speeding here I'm in my car. I'm operating like it's happening. I've thought all along it's happening. Uh that's why when Dan was sending out these fake trades for Ryan Tannehill and this morning uh, was a little tough. Matthew was, Stafford, yeah. <laughs> which were suspiciously favorable to the Jets in terms of the terms. It's like, oh, we're going to give you a Johnu Smith's corpse and like a seventh round pick for uh, for your quarterback. I don't think a third for Ryan Tannehill is out of bounds. And Maybe not. But throwing the Corey sta- Davis back to Nashville. Why the, not? The Stafford one sure seemed a little outrageous. But uh, when Trey Wingo sent the tweet out, and uh, we should move on to everything that has happened because we're going to do a full Rogers pod at some point. Are we? Yes. Are we, though? I don't we know. Are. Do we know anything? Everybody keeps on making a very good point on Twitter. It's like, what is the most Aaron Rodgers way for this to end? Probably to just Here, draw this thing out until, like, August. Here's the thing. Oh, my God. Don't say that. No. <laughs> I think those Jets players. Scott Pioli will explode on the set somewhere. They were re- he was not happy about this today. <laughs> they were <laughs> reacting, I, I believe, off of Trey Wingo's report. And I don't know if they know Trey Wingo's history with reporting Rodgers news, but we do. Mm. And I think he's proven he has he has the beat. He has he is the Rodgers beat. He had the news he was returning last year. He had the news last week mm-hmm. uh, that – he was going to be able to talk to the Jets. So that's two massive stories that this guy who never breaks anything because that's not really Here's his the role tweet. breaks. At, I'm going to trust that it is happening. It, it's, it's happening. Two hours ago, or was it two hours ago, uh, Wingo had hearing Rodgers to the Jets is done. History about to re- repeat itself between New York and Green Bay. Time is indeed a flat circle. And yes, I am plugged in enough on this that um, Scott Pioli, who was – they did a great job all through the morning on NFL Network with Andrew and Move the Sticks and Steve and Cynthia and Scott. And they had a whole segment based off my hypothetical trade tweets, which was pretty Humble surreal Brad. to be watching that on the couch <laughs> happening. And then I was talking to Pioli in the newsroom and he was like, he's like so many other people that are just like, I'm sick of talking about this guy. I'm sick of hypothetical this or that, like make a decision and move on. We get that. Yep. I get that. I'm frustrated about it as well as everyone can imagine. Uh, and and I think everybody is now because everybody wants to kind of move forward. So we'll see if it I, I so happens. Greg, though. I think this is this is happening. It's like they're figuring this out. That would be my guess. I have to say Scott Pioli, a real gentleman. Um, I sneezed twice over the – once and then an hour and a half later and both times from a you know a couple cubicles away. Uh, 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 bless you, he's, he said to me twice. He like also, no, one else, no one else in the newsroom said From a couple a word. cubes away, I heard him ask Cynthia – what is that howling noise? No. Which well. was Dan howling <laughs> and making all sorts of different noises just That's randomly. Kind of and we had to we had to get him out of the newsroom to get him in here. Routine yeah. that I sometimes go through. It's not totally something I can control and I, I wish that can we get a little people would have respect sampling for me. of it? I don't even know. I don't even know. It's a <laughs> bit of a you're werewolf. Working, you're getting thing. the you're getting the energy it's going, that energy the vocal up. cords, the where we were having a I just felt like an old school <laughs> news day because, you know, I was telling Kong like the our newsroom now, it's very nice, it's very technologically sound, but it has a little bit of a third rate Death Star feel mm-hmm. to it where there's low weird energy well, at times. A first rate Death Star. Well, I mean the, it's the very fir- expensive first and rate shiny. is blowing up other planets. So this is like basically just like Oh, I'm you mean saying, in terms of their intentions just, against enemies. Oh, it so. feels oh. just sort of like empty and I meant hollow about the, here the sometimes. And then themselves. you bring in right. a soundboard yeah. that's called Dan Hansis. <laughs> Dan <laughs> into right. the Death we Star. The, we had the full <laughs> slate of uh, talent in there today. It felt like a real news day for what I liked. You it. finally got back at Scapioli for drafting Todd Brady and all the pain <laughs> that he brought you. <laughs> nah, it's all right. Did he he oh he was there. Good for him. I like Scott. Good dude. Um, Eisen, by the way, Rich Eisen, who's also a well-known Jets fan, mm-hmm. pulled into the parking lot. And I, I think he was going to his car to get something, uh, and he sees me to pull in. I said, I rolled down my window. I was like, well, when, when's this going to happen, Rich? Maybe he's waiting for you to get on air. And he goes, man, you got to relax. No. <laughs> no. He said no. that to me down in makeup. He's like, Dan's got to stop tweeting all this stuff. He's, he's spiraling out of control, basically. You're it's on the hard. radar. It's hard. It's hard. All right, so. That's the Rodgers situation, but let's dig into everything else that's going on in this first day of the legal tampering window. Uh, The league year uh, begins officially on Wednesday. You're not going to hear anything or you shouldn't hear anything about Lamar Jackson uh, before Wednesday because the other huge name 
uh, Lamar Jackson, uh, of course, is without an agent. So, and this seems weird, but I don't even care. I don't want to talk about this stuff anymore with the agent stuff. Uh, he can't negotiate with other teams because he doesn't have a representative formally. So all that stuff is going to really pick up, I guess, on Wednesday, hypothetically. So let's get into it now. Let's get into the things that we do know. Let's talk about a quarterback, for instance, that we have a clear idea what's going to happen. Jimmy Garoppolo. He's going to be a member of the Las Vegas Raiders. He gets $34 million guaranteed on a three-year deal from Vegas uh, to play for Josh McDaniels. Uh, Again, none of this stuff can become official until Wednesday, but this is going to happen. We have a good authority. Greg, starting right here, um, you can clearly make an argument that Derek Carr is as good or better uh, than Jimmy G, but Jimmy G is also a guy that's had a good winning pedigree, and he's, let's face it, much cheaper. Yeah, I think it's 47 in the first two years of this contract, and they owed Carr close to 70. And so two for 47 is a little less than Geno Smith money. It's threading that needle, 34 guaranteed. And and like all these, I want to see what that guaranteed really means. It might just be a one-year contract, kind of like Derek Carr's was a year ago with the Raiders where it's one for 24. It's like right in between that to me, they're very much in the mix to draft a quarterback. The reporting out of Vegas is that they will draft a quarterback now If the right one doesn't fall to them at seven, maybe they won't be as anxious to trade up for a quarterback. Maybe they'll be taking a guy in rounds two or three. We've seen McDaniels do that over the years, too. But they have a guy in Jimmy G who I always thought, and it's really stupid because it's based on like one start practically. The second start of 2016 when Tom Brady was suspended and Wes and I went nuts for this game he had against Miami that was like Jimmy G throwing a perfect game. And he looked so good in that system that maybe he's going to be better in the Josh McDaniels. Daniel system. He just probably won't stay healthy because he never stays healthy. I mean, there was a, you know, the Raiders and Aaron Rodgers thing went quiet pretty quickly. And I think that if you want to, I'd want to know what exactly Josh McDaniels and company thought, where they thought they'd wind up when they let Derek Carr fade away. I don't think this is too far from what they thought. I think this thought. is it. This is it. I don't think Tom Brady, Tom Brady would have been um, an option. I think there was, there was whispering and reporting around that of being there's interest, but this was one B and I don't think it stops you from drafting anyone because I think the whole reason you don't go chase Aaron Rodgers, I think they do want to develop someone and this gives you a, it's a, it's a stop gap to some degree, but I think it's easy to hate on Jimmy G where I thought he looked good with the Niners last year. I do wonder though, because yes, he fits with Josh McDaniels, but any quarterback under Kyle Shanahan, what do you what version of that quarterback do you get when you go to the next system? This is probably the next best fit for Jimmy G. Yeah, Jimmy G. I mean, look, the Raiders, they also lost their backup quarterback, Jared Stidham. So they need to put more into this position and almost every other position on the roster because they have so many needs. But the familiarity, I think, really helps. And if Jimmy G did not have the season that he did with the Niners last year, if Trey Lance did not go down and get hurt, we, I don't know, would be having this conversation because Jimmy G got the opportunity to show that he still can be valuable to an organization. Now, how much that has to do with Kyle Shanahan and what he does to this offense to manufacture points, that's a totally different story. Yeah, I would... I think it makes all the sense in the world, Greg, what you were saying, like to get a quarterback in this draft, be aggressive perhaps, um, add a high-level backup. I just think with Garoppolo, it's like, yeah, the best-case scenario is how he played in San Francisco, and it wasn't just Shanahan. It was incredible weapons, and and to his credit, when he was on the field, most of the time he was good and sometimes even looked great. So I don't think you're going to get that level of production, and he can't stay on the field. He's going to miss time because we've seen enough evidence over the years that this guy is not a – starting quarterback that you can count Even on. Even when Tom Brady was suspended, he didn't make it through those four games. They You're had right. to bring in old Jake Brisket. And I just wonder if, and I understand mm-hmm. the, not to relitigate the Derek Carr of it all, I understand at a certain point the organization decided it was time to kind of transition and go in a different direction. I just don't know if this is going to work out the way they hope it will uh, because I just don't think he's somebody you could trust as your QB1. And also, look at the defense that Jimmy G was playing with in San Francisco. This is vastly different in Las Vegas. I mean, Do you think that Jimmy G is an upgrade over Derek Carr? I actually do in this system. And I actually think he could be an upgrade over Jimmy G in San Francisco. Not pure numbers-wise, but I think with McDaniels, 
what he does well, he could play a little better. But again, that the ceiling on that is like 13th best quarterback in the league, and yeah. you still might want to be. I getting, worry less that's about injury prone. His ability to produce, and more about his ability to play. I, I mean, I worry more about where the Raiders are right now. Right. Just in general, I think you're gonna. You can. You, he could play at the same level. But your your environment compared to San Francisco's is a minus. They need to be very active, and they will be. They haven't yet. They're not d- jumping into free agency, but they have a ton of money available, a ton of needs, and I think this was a perfect kind of thread the needle, keep it cheap. Hey, Gravedigger, I was just thinking we, the breaking news drop has been in a bit of a slump on the show. Wouldn't it be the ultimate slump buster for the Rogers news or something else huge to come across the wire over the next hour or so? Mm. That's something to be excited about. That would Fingers be. Fingers crossed. You guys should check our messaging client frequently in case something happens. Thank you. That's what a I'll producer does. I'll send it does. in. Yeah. Well, Beautiful. Graver has provided something which we can get to this down the road. Minor. But it is Titans ask. I wouldn't say it's, so it's breaking right. news, but it'll, <laughs> we're just going to need you to open it up. Slip it in later. Yeah, but thank you. That's what okay. said. <laughs> oh. oh. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Give me one um, Here we go. And here we go. So we know the rate. Go ah! There we go. Okay. I thought you were going to use the Colleen-related drop in that realm. That would have worked, too. Um, <laughs> do you know what I'm talking about? That sounds kind of like a porn. There you mm. go. Um, so we know the Raiders. <laughs> that one. <laughs> the Raiders. Good, 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 good. May or may not be in the business for a quarterback still uh, in the draft, but we know the Panthers are in business. I mean, we did know already, but now we know. NFL Network's Ian Rapport had it, and it is official. The Panthers acquired the number one overall pick from the Bears on Friday night. Uh, one of the great Friday news dumps of all time uh, in exchange for DJ Moore. <laughs> I, mean, very, I don't think that was the intent to bury the news. If I anything, Weird. they probably are annoyed they didn't get much pop from it. Um, in exchange for uh, wide receiver DJ Moore, a very good player, number nine overall pick in this draft, the 2023 second round pick, a 2024 first round pick, and a 2025 second round pick. So, Mark, that gives... Frank Reich, uh, the chance, he's the new head coach of the Panthers, the chance to, to handpick anyone from this college class. And I know, Mark, a lot of people are saying, oh, what a trade by the Bears. And it was. It was a great trade for the Bears. They, they get all those draft assets we talked about, and you get a potential Pro Bowl level uh, wide receiver and more to play with Justin Fields. But if you've been tracking our league the last few years, you know the Panthers have been dying. Every time they try to get a quarterback they want, People say no, and it doesn't work out. They made this trade so they could get who they want, and nobody could tell them no. Yep. I mean, I guess if you are like David Tepper, you swung and missed on Matthew Stafford and watched him go win a Super Bowl somewhere else. Uh, they were in on Deshaun Watson, and that didn't work out for them. There have been or others. Well, I think you could argue yeah. all, at this point, yes. That. But they but they, they, they put themselves out there, and they kept being – like not, they were not able to seal the deal. So, it, 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 does the trade to me look a little bit um, desperate and Bears rich? Yes, but I think if you again, if you're David Tepper, like you are, you have Frank Reich. You cannot saddle Frank Reich with like the third or fourth best choice. And now it's like you can you can scout these quarterbacks all you want and have total buy-in on who you pick. And so from that angle, in terms of being aggressive, and there's a lot of a sense around the league in quotes for multiple reports that it's C.J. Stroud, but they can change their mind if that's not the case. They can pick their guy. It seems yeah. crazy they don't know who, who it would be. Well, I think you'd have to, but I think it's C.J. Stroud is who they're pointing I'm not a, to. I'm not conspiracy theorist. That's Mark's um, corner on this podcast. Is it? I'm not, was I that, mean, did I, maybe not did in this I podcast. Did I conspiratorial there? No, no, I just mean You should it. claim it. You should. I, oh. What I'm going to say is here, in a broader yeah. sense, here is it. one I conspiracy I do buy, that the NFL doesn't want the number one overall pick out there. Oh, of course. And uh, well, they, they, they the say, Rams don't let do this that. info get out in the, in these streets. Right. Because it, it'd be insane not to, not to know who you want to take with the number one overall pick. Was that a rock in. with a message uh, t- tied around it with rubber band thrown through Frank Reich's <laughs> window? <laughs> don't let anybody weird. find this out. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't blame the Panthers. I'm saying like the league, you know, like, hey, let's uh, let's not let this get out there. You I'm know, cool. I like it. a little mystery. I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm fine with it. I don't like and It'd the ripple fine. effects of this, too, are so interesting with the Texans sitting at number two. They thought that they would have their pick of any quarterback that they want. And now they don't have to make that decision because the Colts are going to take that not the, with the first pick. The Panthers, yeah. The, yeah, the Panthers. Although that's what I think this is about because the Panthers are kind of putting it out there too that like we could even trade down. Right. And we're still evaluating. And I think that's where 
they're going to see what information they can get between now and then. And there's like an outside chance they could feel confident enough if they're not taking Bryce Young that that. OK, let's make the bear. Let's make uh, the Texans trade up for Bryce Young. And we end up picking up an extra pick and we still get our guy. At number two. I mean, and the I love NFL DJ would Moore. love that being an option all the yeah. way up to the final hour. I think it will be. Now I kind of think it will be. Um, and Mark, you said that, you know, could look or perhaps is a little bit desperate by Carolina. I, I agree because they did give up so much, including a real a star player and more. But if the guy that they get turns out to be a decade plus answer or whatever. Wait, I looked at the other trades, home though, run. that are, were similar ish. Wentz, you know, near the top mm-hmm. of the draft. Trey Lance near the top of the draft. RG3. This is it, they're all like the same. They all just they just copy each other. It it's wasn't expensive. anymore. If anything, I would say they paid maybe less like the 49ers paid essentially the same just to get up to the number three pick. I, I think for the Bears, this though, is the number one pick but all the in, way from nine in terms of the timing for the Bears, because absolutely you needed more wide out power, more star power around fields and to have DJ Moore, Chase Claypool, Darnell Mooney and Cole Komet. That is a nice four pack of targets and it came during a free agency period that is not wide out rich and a draft class that is not necessarily strong at wide out. So it was for, for Ryan Poles, I think it was a home run to have DJ Moore be part of the deal. That's a great haul for them to get. I mean DJ Moore, he has more career receiving yards than any player in Bears history. Like they're getting a legit Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> more career receiving yards than any player in the Bears one hundred plus year history. He's played like five years, and he's not even one of the top 15. It's saying more about the Bears wide receiver, but still. still. It's still crazy. I would rather have DJ Moore at his salary, and he's under contract for three years, $52 million, than a first-round pick. Mm -hmm. And that's how they looked at it. By the reporting afterwards, it was like they looked at it like he is as good as a first-round pick, if not better. And so then you look at it, you're basically just trading back eight picks. You still get the number nine pick. You get a first, you get two seconds, and you get DJ That's Moore. Great, yeah. And I think Claypool might end up being a little bit of a bust for them, but if he's like their number four receiver, you're, yeah, you're not as in a great trade. Yeah. And for Moore, this is probably one of the best quarterbacks he's played with wow, in Justin right. Fields. But we don't even know. Well, we're going to see. Well, and that's and here's saying the more about the Panthers right. quarterback. It's been a hot yeah. sure. I, I would like to like, you know, anybody wants to join me, like declare war on the who won the blank of the offseason, like who won the press conference, uh, who won the trade. It's like we need not weeks or months, but years to know how it worked out with the quarterback for Carolina, what's going to happen with Justin Fields, what's the DJ Moore era look like, how do these mm-hmm. pa- draft kicks, picks pay out. For right now, both sides, I think, are happy with the outcome. And right. I'll that give could it a, be I'll, enough for now. I'll give it a final grade right now. That's how I look like, at it. What, what is it? What is it? I give an A to the Bears and a B-plus to the See, Panthers. I don't like that. I just feel I'm, like this I'm is the cost actually of doing saying You cannot grade it right now. <laughs> I know. What people, I'm, doing I'm saying people, people, I'm with Dan, though, just that like they're so quick to be like, oh, the Bears, what a haul they get. And it's like, yeah, that's, that's the same haul everyone gets. Well, I'm with it's Mark. Like a, it, they're a, a nice B luxury. Plus? Yeah, B plus. It's a nice luxury. What, what, do you th- what do you think about the quarterback they got? <laughs> uh, I don't know who it so is. So how did you get the grade? I just think that they got good capital right, and got, a great wide gotta, receiver in a market a where you don't have a lot of options. <laughs> I, I think, yeah. Well, if, I was going to say you don't have to take a chance. Right. If you, you don't have to give out a grade on a trade where we don't even know who's involved with it fully and how these guys play. Well, That's we've all. just done that. So, well, right. yes, you it's can. our and job yes, to we talk did. about there it. There we go. Right, For, Mark? Yeah. I'm like Scott Pioli right now on the dais <laughs> during the NFL now, just like amateurs. If the, Bears, doing well. <laughs> if the Bears are wrong about Justin Fields, though, then it's a bad trade. And they'll look at it. And I've heard this, too, that like, well, if we're wrong about Justin Fields, and I don't think they will be. Then we have the resources to go have a backstop before they fire everyone with all these picks. I would say it's a weird you, way to view it. Like it, it, the Panthers are here because they didn't pick Justin Fields too. I mean, there, they, there's a whole alternate universe where it's someone like Chicago having to trade up mm. to do all this business, but it's the Panthers having to do That's it because they didn't pick the quarterback you when know, they had the chance. You know who leads this alternate universe? Who created everything in the end? Roger the Daniels. Adele. The Daniels. <laughs> Keith. Rodney Thomas. Ew. Fourth and 20 at the Colts 28. Mills all alone in the backfield. Here's the snap. (laughs) Davis looking. He scrambles out to the right. Got to get rid of it. Throws it to the end zone and caught it. Jordan Akins. My goodness. On fourth and 20. Akins with the catch. Rodney Thomas misjudged it. 
I'll never forget sitting next to Greg that day, and Greg was loving that whole situation. I was that like, if whole you're a, game, if you're I was Texans, going crazy. Yeah, but if you're a Texans fan, like, there's no way you found any real joy in that watching your team slip to number two overall. Some of those throws by Davis Mills in that game, including that last one, I know it should have been picked, but he was like rolling right and got it there. It was a tough throw. I he's an NFL quarterback. But. He, he, he got it. Made, there. He I'm threw just it right saying, through the hands of a defender. No, I get it, but he was rolling right, and the pressure was coming. Just to, to even give a chance on that no. play was a good job by him. Uh, Davis Mills, what a start! Can we stay actually on the Bears? Even though I know there's, we'll get to the Jalen. We do have to take a break. We're going to okay. take a break. Everybody, relax. We're just getting warmed Greg, up here. Relax. <laughs> um, we'll be right back after this. All right, we are back. We're just digging into the first day. If you're just tuning in. Which is, again, very strange if you were to do that with a podcast. But we're going through the first day of free agency unofficially. Greg, we're sticking with the Bears before we move on. Well, yeah, they spent so much money on Monday. They announced their intent to kind of be that team this offseason. They have the most salary cap space, and they have to spend some of it. And they were the first team to agree to a contract this morning on the West Coast. TJ Edwards, I mean, 16 minutes. They somehow worked out like a very complicated <laughs> three-year contract. What are you insinuating? Uh, with TJ Edwards in like 16 minutes. And TJ Edwards was the first player off the board. And then later in the day, they gave a huge deal to Tremaine Edmonds, who I think is getting, what, 48 or something over the first two years of his contract. It's a four-year deal overall. He got paid, and they also paid uh, a former Titan, Nate Davis, at guard pretty good money. So the Bears are that team this year, and it's just a little weird because off-ball linebacker, not a premium position. You didn't pay Roquan Smith. I, I saw someone um, kind of make the point. Roquan Smith and Jack Sanborn, your guy, mm. uh, may be greater than Tremaine Edmonds and TJ Boom. Edwards. I think you could agree or disagree with that, but it, it is um, a curious couple of players, I think, to start I, your free agency. I mean, it's like the Chicago it. Bears have been like prioritizing off-ball linebackers since the Mesozoic era. I think like, this is the eighth <laughs> incarnation of like them having two of these guys in their defense. And it's like a little bit of with the Matt Eberflus experience. Like he is, you you hired him because of his defensive acumen, but then money is allocated towards that where maybe in a different situation first two draft it goes somewhere else. Year too, right? And it ended up being the worst defense in the league. Edmonds You're, will receive $50 million in guaranteed money on the deal. Oof. I mean, how much do the Bears have in cap space here? It's like, the, like 100 million. Absolute, 90 million? million? You know, yeah. We got after the Jaguars just spending willy-nilly with their excess cap money last year, and yeah. it's ended up well for them with it, their right. second-year quarterback. But I, I, I like spending on offense. Okay. I mean, that's part of it. Mm -hmm. And I think Tremaine Edmonds, specifically, you're buying high. He was in a perfect situation in Buffalo for five years. Great each of those a acquisitions in real time. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. E Edwards is a B. It's fine, B minus. Uh, when you really looked at the money, he was like the first deal that already looks phony in terms of what the agents told the reporters. It really is like a one for eight type of deal. It's not even twelve million guaranteed, uh, and so that's that's fine. T.J. Edwards, Tremaine Edmonds, I'm gonna give like a C minus because you're investing in him at a high. He's coming off the best season of his career by far. He was the first round pick uh, of the Sean McDermott era. And he was up and down. Like, he had one really good year, and that was last year, and he's going to go into a much tougher situation. I can he just... is, He's 24 years old. Right. Yep. Like he's 6'4", 250, and runs a 4.5. So, like, I think that e if you're Eberflus, you're thinking, like, I'm going to get as good a version of him as the Bills did. You hope. You what? hope, but you're not surrounded uh, by as much talent. And it's just like they lost out on Mike McGlinchey, and we'll, we'll get to that later. Earlier I would in the have day, liked to see and that, it almost that felt like this better. was like a pivot. We're going to yeah. spend on someone a lot of money, uh, regardless. Uh, we didn't get McGlinchey. Is that spending too much money at those positions specifically? When I you think look a at lot the market? of the league would say yes. yes. Yeah, Absolutely. those are that's like one of the cheapest positions. Right. Like for instance, the Eagles had Kaiser White last year playing their whole season for a you know two point five million on one year. But especially though, after you said we don't want Roquan, we're not doing this with yeah. Roquan Smith. So we've gone and spent almost as much over with this with the position. I'll just let you guys keep going on the Bears hate. I'm enjoying this. I mean, it's not a hate. How, how far can we take it? Keep going. Tremaine Edmonds was like a top fifteen. Give it the gentleman's F D minus. At, Go at, for it. Uh, top fifteen Gentleman free agent in this crap. He just got that huge bump that happens every couple. Well, they're you know, going every for it. I, I don't mind years. them just going for it on, from another angle. I do agree that building up the offense with pieces is sexier, but they're 
defense heads I think out there. That I think it's smarter. I mean, in way. terms of like it's safer and it's it goes up and down less. I think Edmonds and Edwards are kind of good examples. Like if they were free agents a year ago at this time, would have they have gotten paid much at all? A I would say Ed's. no. I mean, they were also Graver, losing can you games like thirty six to thirty to, last year. Uh, Edmonds' agent, please, and make sure it gets to the player. <laughs> well, he did a good job. The yeah. agent. Oh, yeah. He'll get it to the player, and then we'll have him on the show in the middle of June in the studio. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, the Another big move that happened uh, while we were away, the Dolphins make another big blockbuster move. Jalen Ramsey is coming to Miami uh, for a 2023rd third-round pick and tight end Hunter Long. I'm pretty sure, not to Barry Horowitz this, but I'm pretty sure I said Ramsey makes, I could see him as a Miami Dolphin. That felt like something that made sense. And it does especially make sense when you know where the Dolphins see themselves right now as a team that's all in. So after they went and got Bradley Chubb in a mega trade a few months back, now they add Ramsey to the backfield, uh, Colleen, and you factor in. They pick up the the fifth-year option for Tua. They go Mm -hmm. and get Mike White. Uh, in free agency to be the kind of backup safety net. The Dolphins are looking to get to the Super Bowl with this roster right now. Yeah, they're they're making moves, and they should at this point. I'm already wondering if they're going to go after a running back like Miles Sanders, considering the way that the run game ended last year, and Mike McDaniel, former run game coordinator with San Francisco. Mm. Like I think that they're really putting all of these pieces together. But for Jalen Ramsey... I just felt like he was going to be back in Florida. In my head, I kind of liked the idea of him going back to Jacksonville with a totally different scenario. <laughs> but, him and his Brinks truck. Right. <laughs> but going to Miami, I like it even more because of the past heat between himself and Tyreek Hill. Uh, if you guys remember back in 2018 when uh, he was saying that uh, Jalen Ramsey was saying that Tyreek Hill was more of a punt return specialist or return specialist than uh, a wide receiver. So those two, that'll be fun to see them play together. But the Miami secondary was the biggest area of weakness. It was something they needed to address. And so now that Byron Jones won't be returning, it looks like when you have Jalen Ramsey across from Xavier Howard, you have two pieces that you can really build with. I mean, we've seen the we've seen the Dolphins in past um, free agency incarnations go nuts. And like it always had this feel of like, it's not going to go right. And it often just didn't. This feels different to me mm-hmm. because of the coach, because of how quickly the offense responded to his coaching, the play, the parts fit. And I think you got a different type of aura here in Miami. And I like this. Um, if I'm the Rams from a flip side and you still hang in a Matthew, what are you telling Matthew Stafford in general about how this season and maybe next season? He's a pillar. Look, I just I don't I'm not convinced Matthew Stafford's even on this team. Who is Con- on this team at this point? They, they uh, yeah. cut Bobby Wagner, right? They cut um, <sighs> Leonard Floyd. Leonard Floyd. Now I'm wondering what's going to happen with Aaron Donald because he almost didn't return last year after they won the Super Bowl, and now all of uh, when you have Jalen Ramsey out of there too. I mean, this team. They it's said a those three crew. guys they're building around Cup Donald. No, but you Stafford. can say that, but you're 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 removing a lot of the team that made this a, a special team a couple seasons ago. Last year was a disaster, but like this feels like a project. They're it's, not getting out of this in a couple it months. It feels like this season they're taking a step back to set up for next season. You can't take too far a step back. I mean, the step mm-hmm. back would be let's try to have a winning record and compete, uh, and then next year we go try to win a Super Bowl. I, was anyone else stunned how little Third interest Jalen pick? Ramsey got around the league? Mm. I mean, I, I guess it depends on what, you, what you think surprised. he's going to have left in the tank and internally what people are talking about, what, whether they think he'll age well. He's I only that 28. Was a sign. Like, I think he fits in the Fangio system perfectly. Brandon Staley learned under Fangio. He used him dynamically. Like, even if he plays a little more safety or, you know, near the line of scrimmage in the slot, like, that's still worth a lot. He didn't, like, the it's whole— It's a case like, for the GM app. That's, that's for damn sure. But, well, yeah. I'm sure they asked around. No one wanted him. For so what do you think that says, though? Yeah, it's surprising. I thought they could have gotten more than than they did, but, but they did. Well, they they're reporting. Know. Yeah, I don't think they could have because I mean maybe maybe you had set it up if they traded him last year. Certainly. Yeah. Um, Jordan Rodriguez mentioned uh, at the Athletic that there were five teams in the mix that they were trying to trade him out of the NFC. I do get Sean McVay is a little Mike Shanahan-y vibes that like Sean McVay is the one running this team, uh, you know. Less need is involved. 
and executes the vision. But I think Sean McVay is making the vision. I mean, we heard reporting that like when they couldn't get Von Miller, Sean McVay's on the phone to other guys on the team being like, what do you think of Allen Robinson? All right, let's go get Allen Robinson. Like, I think it's McVay. And um, I was just surprised they couldn't get more for Ramsey. Like Ramsey didn't get that much more money. The whole idea was like, well, Ramsey wants more money. He wants more guaranteed money. We're not going to give it to him. He didn't really get it from Miami. He got 2024 guaranteed. So that that's a big deal. Like that's So two years guaranteed. Instead of one. Yes. But you obviously have this year guaranteed because sure. you, you don't trade for him otherwise. So you got your year guaranteed. But he didn't get like a raise. He just kind of got what was in there. I think it's 37 over two years. Um, pretty reasonable for a top shelf cornerback. So I want to know who those other teams were. And I, I don't know if every team in the league signs up for the Jalen Ramsey experience. It's got to mm-hmm. be, you got to set the table well for to Adam to the I whole thing. I wonder if that like narrative though just kind of got blown out of proportion when he was in Jacksonville. And I don't know. The, how much of it is These true. trade terms make me think it's a little true. I was surprised that a team wouldn't give him more money and that a team wouldn't give up more draft picks. It just didn't happen for him. Like I think Jalen Ramsey's thrilled to be back in Miami, but I think going into this, the Rams have to be really disappointed with what they got for him. Mm-hmm. And I suspect Ramsey and his agent are disappointed with the money that they got. Um, and as far as the Rams go, where they stand now, I just would like to see, and I know they did the whole the whole showcase uh, press conference saying these three guys are our pillars and all that. Showcase. Like when, <laughs> when the They're... chips are down and one of these teams, hopefully not mine, uh, doesn't have the quarterback that they thought they were going to get uh, in this game of musical chairs, let's see how much of a pillar Matthew Stafford is if the phone call, if the phone rings. Totally with you. And for a team like the Rams mm. that is still trying to build up. Because I, I hear, and I think there is value, sneaky value, to be like, yeah, we're not viewed as a superpower, but you know, we could win nine or ten games, and that will put people in the seats, and we might get a playoff game out of it. Like, And we'll still have star power. I think from, from like Stan Kroenke's view, like making that kind of a goal for next year makes sense. But what also makes sense is if you have the opportunity to truly do a, a rebuild where you get a bunch of premium picks – Maybe that's kind of like the smarter long-term play if you want to win Super Bowls. But the, these rebuilds typically, if it's it, now the new fashionable rebuild is like a year for the well-run right. teams, right? But you come out of it, quick. you come out of it typically with a young quarterback to build around. Yeah, I don't know if I see or I can envision mm. Matthew Stafford being the guy on the other side of this rebuild two years, three years from now. He was brought here for something else that he accomplished. I don't see the vision ahead for Matthew Stafford on this roster. So is he traded, maybe? I think if you're talking about, oh, we just learned we didn't trade Jalen Ramsey at the height of his powers. And after giving so much for him, you gave up so much for Matthew Stafford. You're going to send him away for a a year from now for a third-round pick or something? I feel like the Jets losing Rodgers would have been the only team desperate enough to give up a a haul Mm -hmm. that would be worth it, especially considering the the contracts that Donald and Cup and Stafford signed a year ago kind of locked them in and locked the team into having to pay them for a few years ago because they they got paid after the Super Bowl. uh, And that's why they are, quote, weight-bearing walls. Mm -hmm. So that's what they were. They're weight-bearing walls. walls. It's kind of like pillars, Is that what you want to be called? (laughs) Similar to pillars. But not the same thing. Different Well, like they said, a yeah. table with three legs. Problematic, typically. Uh, all right. Colleen, <laughs> this is... A that's, three-leg- a good, that's a good sound draft. Three-legged Favorite. table, though, could be very it, sturdy in well, the right... It could be a, a triangle-type table. But Absolutely. I don't, right, sure. I mean, I, ha- I own one of those pieces. Ideal, of in fact. Yeah. It's three a, legs. That's, in that case, You're sturdy. talking about a square table? I'm talking about a square table. Tough spot. Tough spot. It is. How about this uh, AFC East, though? Uh, they're loading up there. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's hold on that combo until we get the news on the other okay, thing. Okay. Uh, Connie, I, I do want to check in with you. Um, let's talk about Jason Hargrave. Javon Hargrave. <laughs> let's talk about Jason. Yeah, you rather talk about him. Um, he's going to the 49ers. Mm-hmm. A rival. I don't like it. Uh, 30 no. years old. Why would you? What a stud he was on the inside of that incredible record-setting defensive line for the Eagles. 11 sacks. 11 sacks from the interior. Are yeah. you kidding me? And now it was beautiful. He will be pushing that pocket for the San Francisco 49ers getting 40 mil to do so. It, for some reason, it feels extra personal that he's going to the Niners mm. because they face them in the mm. NFC championship. The two like, top dogs in the conference. I know. It makes sense. Yeah. And I don't want to be like, you're a traitor. It's a little because, Dion, like, it's going to be great for him. Dallas, San Francisco back in the day vibes. A little bit. A yeah. little bit. It's the thing is the Eagles just have so many good free agents available, especially on the defense, but he was undoubtedly the best. So 
you lose him. And the fact was this Eagles defense, especially the defensive line, was so had so much depth. So they were able to just like rotate and they were able to stay fresh. And that was such a big part of their success was this pass rush that they were able to generate a pass rush from the interior with him. And they're just I, I, they're going to miss him. They're going to miss him a lot. And I don't know how you replace his production, but they're going to have to. I, I think it slipped under the radar that the 49ers last year were like Bosa, defensive player of the year. Arm, Eric Armstead. Great when he's out there, but missed a lot of last year. And the rest of the group was like, okay. You know, it wasn't as deep, as good a group as they have had in the past. They cycle through these one-year guys. Like, Ebicon played well for them, but he's a free agent again. And it made me think, because I looked at the list of the top five highest-paid defensive tackles, it made me think they should have just never made that DeForest Buckner trade. Mm. Everyone loved at the time. They drafted Javon Kinla uh, to replace him. He hasn't really worked out. And on that list, it's Hargrave, Armstead, uh, Aaron Donald, Deron Payne, and Buckner. And so, you know, two of those guys are now play for the 49ers. You see what they value. One of them used to in Buckner, who, who's in Indianapolis. I love it for Steve Wilkes because you're, you're going through a lot of, like, you're losing coaches in San Francisco on both sides of the ball year after year. Wilkes, though, we know can do it. And, like, he's sitting there as the big winner. If you're Sean Desai in Philadelphia, their new defensive coordinator, like, you're, it, it needs to be understood inside the building that there's a real uphill climb for him to come in and repeat the dynamic, like, quarterback nightmare situation they created a year ago with their front. Mm-hmm. Not all bad news uh, for the Eagles. They get Kelsey returns. Yep. That's nice. I Have, kind of am surprised. Yeah, so, I definitely so. thought he was going to retire. Just because the podcast is doing so well, but maybe it does even better if you're playing. Because Travis is still playing. Well, Sirianni for a while. said he's just been plying Jason Kelsey with like kegs of beer and will continue to do so as long as he stays. Right. I'm not even the... kidding. Like McAfee retired and he that thing was a rocket ship. His podcast and mm-hmm. it just felt like this Kelsey brothers pod is doing so well that it's like a, it's a good time to go away. I like the video of Howie Roseman and Jason Kelsey when like Kelsey uh, tells him that he's not retiring, he's going to return, and Howie has like some Moscato out and he's pouring uh... shots and I mean. I mean, and by the way, how about this? Kelsey, here's the tweet. I'm going to read the whole one. I put much thought into whether it makes sense to play another season. After talking it over with my wife wife and many other friends and family, I've decided to return for another year. Thank you to all my supporters and detractors for fueling me. I ain't fucking done yet. And guess what? And guess what? Aaron Rodgers, it could be that easy. Uh, right. I mean, Here's it, the model. Right. It doesn't make doesn't right. make Jason Kelsey less swaggy or less mysterious or uh, mystical. Ma- makes him swaggier. Mm-hmm. It, it makes it, it just makes life easier for everyone. Yeah. And it's just like, bro, it's football. Like it's it, you're not that important. You're not that special. It's very unattractive. I like mm. someone who is decisive. And to me, the Aaron Rodgers situation, even the fact that it's taken him this long to make a decision tells me that is his decision, that he should retire. But he mm. doesn't you obviously like a want to. Man I a need someone who, a like, build, make a decision, rip build. off the Band-Aid, let's right. go, be confident in it. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But, like, let's stop dragging our feet and talking about it. Yeah, right. He's I, tormented more, by weekend, as I told doing, you. And I just talking. Yeah, make a decision on last week and, you know, get us out of this mess. I, I'm with you. I learned uh, a life lesson. <laughs> okay. Struggling. <laughs> cool. Congratulations. To make a decision. You know, it doesn't have, didn't have as much interest yes. at the time of Aaron Rodgers. But when I was coming to the NFL, trying to decide if I was going to leave pro football talk, I'd worked at NBC for like you know, eight or nine years, and I loved it there. The only thing I regretted in the whole process was at the very end, ultimately, I just I couldn't make a decision. And I, generally in life, I feel like I'm pretty decisive, and I knew afterwards – right away almost that that was my regret and I would never do that again. But in that situation for the first time, I sort of made like a, a mistake. What and was I just, your big hesitation? Well, just like I was very comfortable and liked a lot of things there and the money was basically the same. And do you take this chance on doing that? It was just, I, it was just like going back and forth, going back and forth. Couldn't decide what to do. I mean, do. I met you at the combine before yeah. and it was sort of a recruitment dinner. Did mm. I, did I help? Do you feel maybe, uh, <laughs> That final brick in the yes. wall that just said the NFL.com feels they like the right place. Mark. Well, yeah. it really was the couple weeks. <laughs> it's a weird move. It's a weird move. I'll where I would much. go back and forth. But then I thought, yeah, that's Justin Hathaway. He's a closer. I like this guy. <laughs> Do love Hathaway. 
Uh, Eagles got Brandon Graham back, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's move on to the Broncos, who are making moves. Uh, let me go through it. Let me tell you all about it. So they got Mike McGlinchey. Nice. Big contract. Big mm-hmm. right tackle. Um, 50 million guaranteed. Five years, 87 and a half million, 50 guaranteed. So they make a big offensive line move. They also add left guard Ben Powers, formerly of the Ravens. Four years, 52 million. Uh, they also, as we mentioned, signed Jared Stidham to be Russ Wilson's backup. And that's interesting to me. And makes sense to me. Stidham is a guy who's flashed a little bit. He was originally with the Patriots um, and then went to the Raiders and played a little bit at the end of the last season. And kind of a guy, I think, that works, uh, Mark, for the Broncos and Sean Payton here because you can, first of all, building up the offensive line, very smart because I do think they are invested. I think they are serious about giving Russell Wilson a chance here to right the ship, and it's not fair necessarily to Wilson or anybody else if you don't have a blocking front that works. So you do that, and now you have a backup that you could put in where you're not spending a ton of money on your backup, you're not hedging your bets necessarily, and I would think they could very easily start over next year if either of these guys uh, cannot play the guitar. Yeah, I I kind of view everything that Denver is doing um, as not Russell Wilson-centric, just because I think Sean Payton is secure enough to know that if that doesn't work out, you're just going to build the team around him and get that other quarterback. And, I mean, they needed to fortify the offensive line. Um, at Glinchy, there's a lot of zone-blocking elements to Sean Payton's offense. I think they want to have more of a power run element. I think back to the days of Mark Ingram when he really started to shine under Sean Payton in, in New shine. Orleans and Alvin Kamara after that. But, like, you just want to be able to have that as a huge part of an offense that might not have a quarterback that can play right now. And I liked how it was put out there a little bit, like, with each of these pieces, you're removing excuses away from Russell Wilson if he mm. does not turn into the player he once was. It's like there, you have to build an argument to move on from him if that's the case a year from now. Sean Payton's always coached uh, good offensive lines, like known how to coach them up and, and hire the right offensive line coaches. But generally, like spending this much money on slightly above average starting offensive linemen are like the worst thing you can do in free agency. He was also the top right tackle though on the market. Right. And they needed it. Absolutely. But like the 49ers didn't show a lot of interest in, in keeping him. Ben powers uh, kind of had a career year for the Ravens, a guard. I think he'll make like 25, 26 million in his first two years. Like they're spending a lot of money trying to get to average in the right, offensive but do, line. But it, you're in a, spe- a specific issue if you're Denver because you've given away a bunch of draft picks. You're not going to get necessarily an all pro tackle in free agency because they don't typically exist. Right. Um, and then you don't have the way to go get them through the draft. So you're, you kind of were backed up into a corner here. And McGlinchey, he's up and down, but it's like, I think he fits. Yeah. And they, uh, they like aren't gonna be afraid of spending. I, I still get like Sean Payton a little bit like Bill Parcells in Miami vibes. Just I think there's like a chance here. You know what I mean? Like it's kind of at the end. Let's just like go a little crazy, and it, maybe it's not gonna be as good as it was in New Orleans, but we'll see. Uh, in other news, hey, the Chargers. What's going on with the Chargers? Feeling good about the Chargers? No, I am not. The vibes around the Chargers. They, I share your suspicions. Uh, Brandon Staley uh, still there as the head coach. They replaced both coordinators. They blew a 27 nothing lead in the playoffs. And now Austin e- Eckler is requesting permission to seek a trade after he was met with a cold shoulder um, after contract extension talks with the Chargers. With the Chargers. So it's like, and we had him on the show at the Super Bowl. To, to his credit, he didn't hint at any type of discord or concerns, but well, maybe to his credit, had he, we would have broken news on the show. Right. So it's I, all I don't kind of our fault to right. maybe <laughs> not be turning over a couple stones there. When yeah. he had back to back 20 touchdown seasons and uh, he's probably paid in the back half of starters. I asked him like three beach body questions in a row. It's like, what, what is the fr- let's, for purpose yeah, like of this, this show? Let's, yeah. I like it. Let's it's for me. use Good. this as a teaching moment for the, for the podcast. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, so he's, re- he's requesting permission for, uh, a trade, so we'll see if that happens. And I thought it was also instructive, Greggy, on this. Daniel Jeremiah, like I said, moved the sticks, um, was on NFL Network all morning, and he kind of said in a way like, and, you know, the Chargers are not going to 
top the market or not going to meet his demands for his position. Uh, he calls the games, of course, as the analyst. So it's kind of like if the, if the Chargers are serious about not paying him and he's requesting a trade, this feels like something that could happen and perhaps soon. Yeah, he wanted a raise. I, I think he had uh, one year left on his deal making $6 million. Like, get it now while you can. You're still healthy. Your numbers are Especially good. Especially at that position. I, I get it, but I also get the Chargers being like, actually, we're getting the best Austin Eckler right now. We don't want to pay for the next Austin Eckler. We like this contract, and if you can go you know, get a deal, uh, we'll let you go. We like you enough. We think uh, – we have other priorities. This Good draft is, for running backs, too. Yeah. This is Austin Eckler just trying to ensure his future. I mean, if he gets hurt this season in his the final year of this four-year contract that he's on, then he's kind of screwed. So he needs to, if the Chargers are not willing to give him a long-term deal, which they aren't, which is prudent on their part, he should be able to explore other options if they're out there. It really stinks getting... Uh, was he undrafted? Like, you really get banged over and over just by being undrafted. Like, Especially his, at that position. His career has been better than Saquon Barkley's. Not like he would have gotten Saquon Barkley's contract necessarily, but because he was undrafted, he had to take a deal that was really good for him at the time, three years into his, like his you know undrafted rookie deal, but now looks very below the market. And you're always like trying to catch up to the money that you didn't make in the first place. And so you don't, you don't blame him. Uh, but I think he'll be elsewhere. There's a, I think they were going to have a lot of trades. Laramie Tunsil is another player that uh, requested permission to seek a trade, the left tackle of the Texans, one of the very best in the league. And the Texans, despite speculation last year, held on to him. He delivered another high quality season, Mark. Uh, and if he goes on the market, he could fetch quite a pretty penny given the premium position. It's kind of the opposite of running backs, a left tackle. Right. Immense value, both in uh, uh, trade value and in salary. He's been linked, uh, you know, here and there to the Chiefs, who have moved Woo! on from Orlando Brown. But they went and got Jawan Taylor, who has been a right tackle career-wise uh, with Jacksonville, but they're going to move him over to left tackle, according to James Palmer our uh, friend. So that's a lot of money if you then go try to d sort all this out. But I think they, they lost Andrew Wiley, the Chiefs, the right tackle. So they still have to find someone to protect Patrick Mahomes. So Taylor, you know, you could put him on the uh, on the right side if you got Larry Tunsil. He got yeah. huge money uh, from the Chiefs, but not as huge as what Orlando Brown was going to make. They would be scary as hell with Laramie Tunsil. That's their mm. left tackle, and it, but do you think they paid him as a left? Uh, Jawan Taylor as a I mean, left tackle, though. That's I mean, what I see that contract as. But it doesn't seem like it's totally shut down. I I tend to think that getting floated out there might be like, well, we don't necessarily need you, Laramie Tunsil. Um, but it hasn't gotten shot down that this could happen. I did go to Tunsil's Twitter page. Is it like checking it out? It's yeah, always see, an see interesting what's place. A lot of fun. Yeah, what's going the, on there? The likes and whatnot. Oh, Aaron Rodgers had a funny uh, like today of like Razul Douglas saying I he had that. Rodgers' phone. Um, <laughs> and so the I'm last tweet from Lar Laramie Tunsil is LMAO man. And that was yesterday that, uh, you know, for the kids laughing my ass off. Nice, right? dude. So I just feel like, okay, something <laughs> happened. The kids? That's, I feel like that's been in the lexicon for a while, Greg. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> For the kids, for the children out there, Ruffle for copter. the forty-three-year-olds, uh, <laughs> that uh, that was a joke. Uh, I'm a human. <laughs> <laughs> that feels like okay. I don't know why I'm reading that. It's like I'm not going to be a Texan anymore. They won't pay me what I want to make. Uh, and then immediately retweets Patrick Mahomes saying NFL is going to be wild this next week. And Ooh, that's back yeah. to back. And it does. These guys are all talking to oh, each yeah. other. Come on. Uh, cycling back to Eckler, by the way, he has 38 touchdowns in the past two seasons. Um, He's coming off a career high is, in targets. He has made 21 million total in his career. That's what I'm talking about. And that is not to say that 21 million is anything to sneeze at. I would love 21 million. I'd love a million. But 21 million for a guy who's had 38 touchdowns in the last two years. You see where it gets a little janky. Like when we talked about some of these other players getting the money they're getting, Eckler is a machine. What about him with the Buffalo Bills? They, I, they're, they're. That's a spicy a meatball, back. Mark. I mean, wow. Juwan, right? Jawan Taylor plays a premium position. I get that. 
Uh, Juwan Taylor hadn't been lighting it up for most of his career. And offensive linemen do develop late, but he gets $60 million in guaranteed money, and Eckler is saying, just, can I have a little bit of a raise? Ooh, uh, that's a spicy meatball. Uh, the Falcons are uh, doing some work. They signed Jesse Bates, safety. They signed David Onyemata, uh 24 and a half over two. They're not done yet. They give Chris Lindstrom, their star guard, $105 million to stay put. Hmm. Uh, Connie, that is a lot of lifting on the first day of free agency for a team that is looking to make a move. They're just out here flexing, flexing their muscles, um, giving out the bag. Jesse, Jesse Bates, I like this one because, <laughs> I mean, we knew that he was going to be gone from. I wish he just would have stopped after that yeah. set up. And been, so that was the analysis. Would be so perfect. for the kids, when she says bag, <laughs> bag, it's talking about money. Money. He's bringing I in the I think the, the kids know Got this. It. It's the. Well, for the geriatrics? Yeah, I mean, it's the Geriatric people. millennials? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I think I'm, I'm one of those. Oh, no. Sometimes I don't know what the when someone one of you is talking and when it's a drop. <laughs> um, it feels like those so lines I mean, are, I feel that are way, blurred. So. <laughs> um, but Jesse Bates, last year I remember Sorry I was in. Sorry to interrupt in... you again. You're fir- you're firmly a millennial, by the way. Okay, thank you. I'll take it. You're in that I feel camp. like I, I'm geriatric. I, my soul is Greg Gen and Mark Z. Or Gen X. Mm. Honestly. I'm on the borderline. I don't know. I uh, mean, it's almost like this generational stuff is nonsense. A little bit, maybe. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Should we talk about Jesse? I don't yeah, subscribe to any of that, by the way. But yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <Okay>. Sorry. <laughs> when I was at the <laughs> Bengals training camp this summer, Jesse Bates still was kind of like, we didn't know what he was going to do. He sort of like hadn't hadn't signed the tag yet, hadn't reported to camp. Um, so we knew that, you know, he was out of there. And he's going to really help out this Falcons pass defense. They allowed the eighth most passing yards last season. They desperately needed some help in that department. And Bates, second team all pro in 2020, 14 interceptions. I mean, he he's a really good player, and I think that he'll add a lot of value to this team. Lindstrom getting 105 is wild. Like, yeah, that's so he's another much. example of offensive lineman, and he's always been good. Uh, but he went to another level. He was second team All Pro this year. They do develop slower than other positions. That I truly buy. I think other some positions are up and down, like cornerback, maybe off ball linebacker, stuff like that. Running backs you'd rather have early. Offensive linemen you'd rather have in the middle to late. They they get better and better, and he got better. And that Bates contract was awesome for him. You like seeing a guy who bet on himself, like with the, the one-year deals, never took the long-term contract from the Bengals, uh, be rewarded. Usually it's phony where it's like, oh, the four-year 64, I was like, oh, that's too much for him. It's actually almost phony the other way. He gets $36 million in the first two years the of the deal. Phony. It's, it's front-loaded. He should get all that money. Like, he is going to get paid. It is, uh, you know, Dean Pease is gone, retired, so Ryan Nielsen is a stepping into that role for the first time in Atlanta. I don't feel like I've trusted Atlanta's defense um, in, like, half a decade plus at this point. <laughs> right. um, and if you're the Bengals, you also lost Von Bell to the Panthers, so you have a you have an issue at safety. Onyemata got way too much money. $24 million over two is is wild for a guy who's 31 who looks incredible for three or four straight games and then kind of disappears. He's had a very like an up-and-down career. Uh, but like you mentioned, they have a new defensive coordinator who was in New Orleans. Their GM used to be in New Orleans, and you always like go get the guys you used to love. Mm. Right. They they targeted aggressively to make a move uh, like this this quickly, and they, they believe. He's a perfect scheme fit for what they do. And you got to spend that cap space. I do. I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth on some level because it's a waste to just be rolling over all that cap space. We're going to take one more break, and then we are going to hit the rest of the news. All right, we're back. Um, During the break, um, Mark pulled me aside into a private room, and he said. It was a long break. Dan, all this talk about, like, where you want to put me, how do you categorize who I am? I'm Generation Next. That is a direct quote of our conversation during that that um you know leisurely lengthy break we just took. And I looked you right in the eyes and I said, "Okay, I respect that." Thank you for honoring my uh, my needs. Who else is in Generation Next, Mark? Literally just one person. It's just Mark. <laughs> All Pepsi drinkers, I think. We need- well, no, it's a different. It's different than that. Pepsi subset. Zero. You know, it's my thing. I'm with myself also. <laughs> 
All right, let's get to the rest Everyone of Everyone, check out Colleen's Instagram for some great sponsored hey, content. That's right. I've been, you guys I've been meaning to ask zero you yet? about this. <laughs> oh, you didn't hear them talking about it for 15 minutes <laughs> in the newsroom? I have like three Pioli's cases like, oh, at least it finally stopped uh, Dan from honking. I have noticed, was, was there one of you like on a beach drinking the product that mm-hmm. you now... That I pulled you... over to the side of the road. That's good. Uh, it's organic. Yeah, it, Can you it tell was. the Disney yeah. story real quick? Before? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> I have another upcoming Pepsi post for you guys. And Can I, I was like trying you to... you guys. You got all you guys, <laughs> for, all my fans out there. <laughs> for Generation Next and the rest of them. For Generation Next. Yeah. Uh, so I went to Disney for the first time ever uh, a couple days ago. And I was like... Oh, that could be perfect. There's so many things going on at Disney. I could figure out some way to like integrate a Pepsi, or I'll just myself drink a Pepsi there. there. So I am going in through security at Disneyland, <laughs> and I get through security with the Pepsi. I didn't even think it would be a problem because uh, whatever. Well, you're um, a pitch woman, so of course it shouldn't exactly. be a problem. Exactly. Right. And I'm gathering all of my things, and it's very chaotic and hectic because. Our friend that took us to Disney really loves Disney. She's a Disney person, and we needed to be there for rope drop, which I didn't even know was a thing. I love that that's a term. That's a thing. So we are (laughs) rushing to get through, and I don't like to be rushed, and so I'm already like kind of like in a in a space that is not great for me. And I gather all of my (laughs) things as I'm walking away from security, and I hear something crash onto the ground. And it's the Pepsi can, and it explodes oh, no. everywhere. <laughs> Mm. It's like it dollar starts, signs coming out of like the, the can with the rest of the combination. <laughs> it starts spraying the security guard. And he oh, like no. <laughs> Colleen. Yeah. So Colleen. then I had Pepsi all over me the rest of the day, and we were there for like 14 hours. Oh, that's a great the symbolism. So your post yeah. captured all. Will yeah. it capture all this? No, and, because oh. we were going to miss the tram. So of I course. have. Uh, and then you would have missed rope drop. Yeah. Can't so, do that. But you know what? They got tuned. their money's worth. They got this uh, story. Honestly, yeah. I'm on just, this honestly, huge platform. I didn't realize yeah. that was a crutch for me, um, which I'm just realizing my honesty crutch. Justin, we've got some developing news. <laughs> I'm not going go, to go breaking. I'm not going here. breaking. I'm going developing. Like, okay. uh-huh, uh-huh. That's my favorite. Linebacker David Long, ranked in the top 25 of my top 101 free agents, is signing with the Miami Dolphins two years, $11 million. Oh. Love that deal compared to... The Tremaine Edmonds deal. That's, That's all cheap. I was saying. That's all I was saying. Like, uh, he's a. I know he doesn't have the forty time. Maybe not quite as much. He doesn't need it. He's a football player. He has great instincts. This is a great value. Ooh, do you guys hear something? Um, no, something, I haven't heard there, anything. I played it like. I feel like I'm having a mouth. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. multiple hey. times hey. in an episode. All right. Um, I just. It's think- always your entryway. That David Long is a great linebacker, and um, he's like, he's a little limited in coverage, but he's pretty dang good. And the Dolphins got a great deal here. I mean, looking at the other linebacker signings, like what the Bears did today, it's a pretty nice deal. So I know I made David a joke Long about it Hunter before, Long. but the AFC East really <laughs> is uh, looking pretty good. Hold on that. Okay, I Come get to it. Like, I get it. Great okay. combo coming up, maybe. Cut to, like, Titans headquarters and, like, it's just Rand Carthen, like, taking a massive nap in, like, an office somewhere. <laughs> The Titans signed. Titans are not somebody. taking the Rams path. Like no, there they, are no pillars. They signed. They signed somebody. I don't know if we'll get to it on this episode. But Maybe it's, a it's just like signing. it's like a circus tent when they have they they're beginning to take it down. They take out the big pole in the middle. And it's just like a big right. flat, <laughs> like giant big top on the on the turf yeah. on like the hard dirt ground. Depressing. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, that, that's yeah. the Titans right now. No, I support that though. I think the Titans should try to win zero games no, in you 2023 tell whatever and you need draft to. Caleb Williams. I, it's hey. like oh. yeah, I feel like, you on that. There are no that's way. A strategy. It's There's sound. no weight bearing walls. It's like a FEMA trailer that they gave out. It's like that never worked. Hey, way to go, Brownie. Remember it, that? It's just like Ryan Tannehill <laughs> and Derek Henry like gasping for air under this gigantic <laughs> big top. Like, let us out. Let he, us escape. Meanwhile, uh, he's trying to do some coping coping mechanism here being like, I don't know if you're going to get, but I did like this uh, deal that they signed later in the day. Yes, they got the former first round uh, Philadelphia Eagles tackle Andre Dillard, literally the only player who's ever played on the offensive line for the Eagles that didn't work out Ooh. and end up being one of like, well, the best lines. Did he just not work out? Just saying. Sounds great. He trying to get face. hurt. Jordan <laughs> Mailata <laughs> is really good. Sounds like, like when, a trank. When he <laughs> played, he was like, fine, you know, okay. He was, I, he was a, I looked up his PFF grades and I, that's that's not the end. It was worth a all, shot. I'm just saying, like, they've had a lot of people go through there, and they all end up doing great except for this one guy. Like, That's the guy you nine got. Nine and a half million a year. It's, like, not a huge deal for us. what's going to be their starting left tackle, okay. right? Okay. How was your Oscars party? Let's talk about something yeah. less depressing. It was super fun. 
Good. Yeah, we had a it good time. It was at your place. Uh, not exactly, okay. no. But, oh, I thought oh. it was... Oh, yeah, it was I didn't want to, like, correct you, it because it was no, just No, you went to an Oscars being... party. No, yes. yeah, okay. you... you um, well, I thought you were hosting an Oscars party. Right, you prioritized like... someone else's Oscars yeah, that's party a little over Aaron Rodgers. I didn't Rogers. prioritize... Wow. I know, if Aaron Rodgers <laughs> happened, we would have done a pod. It would have been Where fun. Where is your commitment to the show? It would have happened. What did you bring to the party? <laughs> like... Like Jessica. what? Did I, well, Jessica was there. Right. We brought a bottle of wine, two folding chairs, and a lot of themed foods. So we made folding chairs. What? Well, we oh, need extra chairs. For LA this apartment yeah, doesn't have a exactly. billion chairs. I get it. And uh, all the foods were named after puns. So we brought the everything, everywhere, all at buns, which were cinnamon rolls. They were great. <laughs> I'm so upset that Dan asked you what you brought. <laughs> I adore it. I love that. No, I love it. it never kidding. changed. I'm Which kidding. one of you came up with that with the pun, or did you just seamlessly come oh, up with it together? Came up, no, they said it like they're like, "What should we say?" And then they said it at the same time, yeah. and then they just like ca- passionately kissed in the kitchen, as like a heart went around wow. them, as like a uh, what do they call those things? The wipe. Yeah, a heart oh, yeah. To the next scene. Type of, yeah, yeah. The next love, like an, I love, love scene of their great yeah. life <laughs> together. Like, that is exactly how it went down. <laughs> it's like uh, do on three Cinnabons. Uh, uh-huh. What's it called? Wait, what was it called? Everything, everywhere, all at buns. Okay. Okay. Can you remember that? Yeah. On three. What should we call it? Oh, I don't three. know. Everything, Everything everywhere, everywhere, all at buns. buns. Oh! Uh, big heart, big swoop, a uh, fade out to the next perfect scene of you guys in <laughs> your <laughs> life together. <laughs> Folding chairs. <laughs> what do we need? On three folding chairs. No. All right, let's move on. <laughs> Wait, that is weird, though, because no one has furniture, so you, they needed someone to bring folding chairs, but m- people that don't have furniture, why do you have folding chairs? I was wondering I, about yeah. that. Did we you bring, like, bread balcony. and water, too? Right. Any, any other, like, survival? Blankets? No. <laughs> Batteries? No, no. So do you consider everything everywhere all at prunes? <laughs> that's what. Mm. That's what Greg came up with with his uh, significant other. Yeah. What was another good pun? <laughs> Is this where we tell Greg we were all at the party? Yeah. <laughs> uh, there was uh, meatballs quiet on the Western Front. That was a pretty good one. Mm. Man, good. You guys should have been oh, at the ceremony. Band yeah. cheese of Inishirin was a cheese that's board. That's a good pretty one. Good, I like that good, one. Good, yeah. Um, yeah, can't remember. Okay. okay. Someone How about tar and it's literally just like a wet bowl of tar. <laughs> oh, like, there was come eat this and see what happens. This tar. 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 There was a tar <laughs> pun, but I don't remember. Tortilla what it was. chips with tar. <laughs> That's pretty good. Tortara <laughs> chips. <gasps> like someone's dead on the floor. It's like, oh, he actually. Oh, it was a prop. All right, let's get into it. Uh, <laughs> Where are we? Let's finish things up. Kale Blanchett. Where were we? Generation. Kale Blanchett. A healthy dish. I like that. All right, sorry. Go. We're back to the. What we're doing. Former Steeler Cam Sutton heads to the Lions. He gets $22.5 million guaranteed. The Steelers then turn around and sign Pat Peterson, the veteran cover man. Uh, you think uh, Pittsburgh comes out okay there? Does Peterson have anything left like, in the tank? Where are we at there? I think Peterson feels like uh, one of these Steelers signings that I just trust will work out. But they really needed cornerback help So after losing Sutton. He's not so. a young man. No. It's a young man's position. He played pretty well last year. The, these are the type of guys that weirdly get undervalued in free agency. It's like, oh, just let's pay Pat Pete $7 million. He'll be a fine starting quarterback. You don't have to go crazy. But I think they were disappointed. It sounded like they were trying to keep – Cam Sutton, who they developed into a, a nice player. He got $22.5 million guaranteed from the Lions, who definitely needed another cornerback. I think that makes him a little less likely uh, to take a cornerback at six. A lot of people had that mocked mm. as them taking the top cornerback uh, off the board. Maybe Witherspoon. Maybe now it's like a little more Anthony Richardson, possibly, if he ever slipped there. But either way, like they, they needed a cornerback. I like that. I the Steelers could still take a cornerback, though. Sure. Ian's uh, tweet when it happened was... Uh, bah, 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 Patrick Peterson, a surprise, a perennial star headed to a historic franchise to beef up their back end. Have you noticed this thing? It's starting to gain more momentum with the insiders, Ian and Mike and the Pell Razor, uh, the guys on live television with the phones. So it's a lot of that. And we're now yeah. we're treating these men of the media, these insiders, as if they're carrying bayonets during the Revolutionary War. And they're just these like fearless heroes that will do anything to defend them, defend their country, and get the story. Like I, I well, they're, like, even, they're fighting each other too. They're fighting each other. In fact, I like this. I had Justin cut this. <laughs> it's real. I mean, the battle is real, and the battle is sometimes within your own platoon. Ooh. Listen, You're right. Yeah. Listen to uh, Mike G getting a phone call when they just threw it to him to deliver something. 
from Denver to the Seahawks. And if you remember, James Palmer did a tremendous, I'm on the air, I'll call you right back. Don't give it to anybody else. Bye. Um, Wait the, for it. Uh, Shelby Harris was part of that trade. He did a phenomenal interview with our James Palmer. I know what Definitely he meant. Give it to Ian. What Definitely he meant don't, was, give it to Ian. don't give it to Ian. <laughs> and then Ian uh-huh. got a phone call. And what happened, Justin? He ripped, he ripped off his headset and he was out of there. Yeah, he was he I love Tom that. Pelissero like faked like he was getting a phone call just to mess with Mike and then Classic Ian got a razor. real phone call and had to bolt off the set. I was watching this live and I can confirm to you, having worked with Mike Garofolo closely for so many years, if you don't know Mike and just heard that sound drop, like you'd be like, mm, I feel like he was just putting on for like the camera because it's free agency. <laughs> That's literally almost every single production meeting I've had with Garofolo mm. that has happened. Well, that he's exact also same a man thing. of high integrity, so right, I don't but, think yeah. he would fake things. I, yeah, and I also like that the person he was speaking to totally disregarded uh, what Mike said, as he oh. should have. Be like, Ain't no I, don't, loyalty. I don't have I don't time care. for you. I'm not I'm waiting. Com- I'm calling rap sheet. What's Next the difference on the if one of you beats it by? <laughs> 15 ah. seconds of the other. There was also about a 15-minute period where Jane Slater's dog in the background um, sounded as if it had taken six tabs of LSD. <laughs> yeah, that was, I was listening to that, too. It they're going to have to put that one in the garage going yeah. forward. She has two dogs, yeah. Yeah, it was one of the two. Well, whoever the culprit Birdie was. Birdie and Pepper. I thought it was in our newsroom for a minute that a dog had escaped into a It sounded like Birdie. Place. It did sound like Birdie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the first thing, and knowing Ian, the first thing Ian's saying when he picks up the phone is, why did you call him first? Oh, of course. no question. Like, all right, now what is it? Interesting world. They I think they're in. just getting called because the agents are seeing them on TV and they want to what create a sandbox. some chaos. Mm-hmm. What a sandbox to live in and play in. And we've given, you know, Pell Razor a great nickname and he seems to not have any concept this has occurred in his life. We'll tell have him. you told him yet? We haven't I seen don't him. really have a chance. I don't speak with him Pell ever. I'm going to see it. But we weren't. Once in a I should while. have we told him yesterday. To the I worked with him yesterday. I think it's something we should personally talk okay, to him all about. Right. Um, unless so you want to be off? our ambassador on it. Do you want to? That would be weird. That would be weird. But yeah. I don't think I have another show with him for a while, so it's on you guys. It's a great nickname. Maybe they'll send us so to the good. draft. I don't know if that happens. Simply but if they did, provide the message. <laughs> well, th- then we can. that would give us the opening to have the conversation it would. in the hotel lobby. Hey, why? Um Got you a bit of an elite nickname. It uh, is that a great you could nickname, brand right. and uh, maybe get rich off. It's a it's a masculine nickname. I think it's one that suggests that he's great at what he does. Aggression. Yeah, like that. There's he's got a better nickname than is it better nickname than Rap Sheet? Right, and also makes Way people think of the cinematic classic Hellraiser starring Pinhead <laughs> in Hellraiser <laughs> Two. Three, four, and five. I think four. It yeah. does make them think of all five of those. But like the whole the cont of like, uh, hey, I'll call you back. Don't give it to anyone else. Like Pellraiser is like, right. You uh-huh. don't give it to somebody else. Yeah. You give it to Pellraiser, right? Or else. And and for the kids out there who weren't familiar with the movie, uh, his name was Pinhead because he <laughs> literally had pins in yeah. his head. I like that you're just describing cool. everything that's for cool. the for the kids. Yeah. I or actually, to the I adults that that via the kids. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of explanations from Greg on today's episode. I like it. It's informational. And that's what today's <laughs> He's a episode's context about. Guy. Uh Deron Payne. Hey, the guy's a player. Commanders have him in their building. They don't let him get out. The defensive lineman gets a four year ninety million dollar contract, uh, reportedly uh via rap sheet. Sixty million in guarantees. He had gotten the franchise tag, so they wasn't going anywhere. Good news for uh, my guy, Quinnen Williams, uh, if Deron Payne's getting that, that's at least what mm. Quinnen Williams gets. And, well, good and, news. Oh, sorry, Jeffrey Simmons, if the Titans decide to field a defense mm-hmm. this season, like he, that's, <laughs> another, that's a framework there for that contract. That's a lot of money. They got to drag that it, it is, big top it, off. It is really most. good to time your very best season of your career in your contract year, which was what uh, Deron Payne managed to do. Good weekend for Quinnen Williams, too, because his brother got paid. Yes. Quincy by the Jets. I like that move, uh, but let's make sure we get the better Williams brother. Speaking of Jetsies, I really all. like. Speaking of Jetsies, I really like. Nice. Uh, Sam Darnold. <laughs> Sam Darnold. Yeah. Good he job. is not on the Greg Rosenthal Top 101, but he is now the property of Kyle Shanahan, who knows an unpolished gem when he sees one. Um, with Brock Purdy recovering from elbow surgery, with Trey Lance, a big old question mark. Uh, the Niners signed Sam Darnold or agree with Sam Darnold on a one-year contract, giving them a little bit more stability in that QB room and uh, potentially, and here, this is my my sincere hope because this, 
as somebody who thought that Darnold was wronged earlier in his career, and I thought he got some sense of uh, self-respect in the league back during his Carolina tenure. It would be full circle for him to now be on a loaded offense with a gifted play caller just to see what would happen. I hope he gets meaningful snaps, and uh, that would be fun. Maybe he becomes – oh, imagine. How rich would it be, Greggy, if Sam Darnold was the Geno Smith of 2023? And we have one every year, and this this okay. year's Whoa. version. Yeah, okay. It's very possible. Hey, I all mean, it takes is an opportunity yep. and a little bit of uh, high-level play. I maybe. mean, the Darnold heads out there. Are there? You – DJ, the people <laughs> DJ. Who, who said oh. Darnold was like one of the great prospects ever, including DJ, and there were plenty of them out there. I think I've believed in him throughout. If he could just get into the right situation. And last year, I was like, look how it's going. And then he had like the worst game any quarterback had all season in week 18. Oh, and it, it. kind of uh, wiped the oh, that, I that thought stop it. In my mind, I'm just saying. I mean, how many it, times you got to bring that up? Too many. One wow. game. Uh, they didn't say the money on this deal, but it is a I mean, if he could ever get on the field for them, it would be an incredible opportunity. When they don't say the money, it means it's not much money, but that's not a, a surprise. He's going to be the third quarterback, I think, if everyone's healthy, but if Purdy's not ready and then Lance is See, giving I you take some it as, you know, thing, he, he, yeah. it's a contract that probably has some incentives, but he can be the third quarterback if he doesn't end listen, up playing. Listen, he's not going to be, obviously, he wasn't going to be in the Panthers' plans. He wants to play, but I would think he would might, he might be open to waiting things out a little bit unless the Niners were like, hey, the way things are set up right now, you're going to have an opportunity. You're not going to be third string in week one. I think this might tell you more about Purdy's timetable. Mm. That, that or like there is this world where if you're going to ride into the season and even might before Darnold with Purdy and Trey Lance, like are you really keeping both of these guys? I mean, I, there's a reason you would maybe, but you could potentially trade someone like Trey could Lance. Trey Lance get traded? Now? I'm just saying, that would be well, wild. No, nothing I, is wild I anymore. Yeah. Nothing's maybe. wild. Are you going to have him sit, sitting on of your Sam roster? Darnold, though, but Not I think having Sam Darnold, but Sam Darnold gives you there. another quarterback. No, but with Purdy is the the future there that they bought in on him. Darnold is the, the backup they're comfortable with, and it's. I think they're just scared because Josh Johnson entered an NFC championship game right. for them. And, and I and I get that. It's Why a not? great landing spot for Darnold, and it goes back to California. It's like I kind of like it for him a lot. If he got to get a couple spot starts early, you get a different version of him in an offense that's competent. I'm happy for Sam. All right, and Bucks news. They resign Jamel Dean, the cornerback, four years, 52 million, 26 guaranteed via a rap sheet. Uh, they also have an eye out. Uh, Baker Mayfield, uh, speaking of Interesting. class of 2018 quarterbacks, uh, Mayfield was potentially on the radar of the Niners. Obviously, they went in a different direction with Darnold. Uh, number 101 on the top 101. Uh, there's been some talk that he, they could eye him as potentially a guy who could start for them week one if he could beat out uh, Kyle Trask in a uh, uh, camp battle. It doesn't sound promising. <laughs> like, this is uh, – I. I understand that this is the situation that the Bucks are in right now, now that Tom Brady has retired. But bringing in Baker Mayfield to compete with Kyle Trask is not something that is really selling me on the team. Right. I am curious what else they'll do. Maybe they'll draft a quarterback. They, they are this team that's just floating out there. Their new coordinator uh, was the, the Seahawks quarterbacks coach last year, Dave Canales, but they still have players there. I mean, I don't think Godwin's going anywhere. Mike they Evans have a good offensive line. They got players. I wonder the, if like... Um, if I w I'd rather be in Sam Darnold's shoes, though, and just have a chance to play in San Francisco than just oh, trot sure. out Baker Mayfield I as a starter. I wonder if, like, if Baker's destiny is becoming more Fitzpatrickian, where he ends up hanging around longer than anyone expected, and he pops once or twice almost every year when he gets opportunities. And sometimes that ends in like a starting job that may last or may not last. I wonder if that's kind of Baker's arc and would he sign off on that? Does I'm he sure have, he, he might if, if he have, gets to play it, 15 years. Does he have years. as much upside as well, I think so. Ryan Fitzpatrick? Well, I know Ryan Fitzpatrick no, no. had He never even made the playoffs, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Ryan Fitzpatrick had, went through a lot of valleys. I mean, like, we, right. I think we got the full – like version where he just was so comfortable in his own skin and so having so much fun at the end of his career. Like I Baker's could kind of see Baker that way too. Though. I could too, because I yeah. think Baker's had sort of a shadow of him for a while. And I am not pitching him as a starter, but like there's a little bit of interest reportedly in Jacoby Brissett in Tampa. But I think like, I'm glad they're not a week ago. It was like Kyle Trask or nothing. It's like, don't even try that on us right now. So like Baker, I think is someone you could bring in as like a patch and I he's mean, not going to cost you a ton of money. 
I think I don't know if he has the people skills that Fitzpatrick has. I think mm-hmm. to have no. that type of career, you need to be that dude that can fit in any situation and that everyone loves in any situation, whether he's the backup, whether he's the starter. I mean, he threw for 35,000. There's not a lot of uh, yards in his career. There's not a lot of Ryan Fitzpatrick. Aren't you there need, still yeah. a bunch of front offices that have their scouting report on Baker Mayfield? Yeah. And when you're a first overall pick, you're going to get just many more chances than if you were third or fourth round. Yes. Uh, Ro- Robert Woods signed with the Texans, uh, formerly of the Titans, for more money than I personally expected. Uh, what was the money on that? Twelve and a half or two. I just I don't know. That seemed rich considering he gave the Tennessee nothing coming off an ACL injury and he's north of thirty, right? Grave digger. Am I a little? Are, are were you a little surprised to see? I was. Yeah. And okay. so I mean, before free agency even started, is like the Texans prioritized getting. That's Robert what I mean. Woods. The timing was interesting too. He, uh, he finished with the fewest yards of his career. I think like, the idea is you're maybe better the one more year away from that surgery. Uh, maybe he was sure. getting a little better at the end of the season. And I, and to get that money suggests that there was some sort of bidding, and I wouldn't be surprised if the Rams were the, the team that were trying to bring him back. And if but, Brandon, but wouldn't extend yeah, out Brandon that Brandon Cooks the door being potentially. Like shopped around, yeah. it is interesting that Robert Woods and Cooks are back on the same team again Ooh. like they were in L.A. Hamana, Hamana. All Titans right. beat writer Paul Kuharski tweeted, he will be a quarterback's best friend if your quarterback loves slow receivers. Oh, wow. Kuharski oh, drops no. a bomb. He was on this show, right? <laughs> he was. Wasn't he was, angry about uh, he the He was Tytoons delightful, nickname? yeah. He was really annoyed with a lot he of was stuff. salty about that nickname. <laughs> you, and, yeah. you and him uh, went at it. We really, we really went toe to toe. Hands is V. Kuharski. Uh, the Patriots <laughs> uh, resign. Like Banshees have been a sheer in a little bit. Like uh, of that. <laughs> the Patriots resign cornerback <laughs> Jonathan Jones. The Falcons oh, yeah. acquired John U. Smith from the Patriots. It turns out the the John U. Smith Hunter Henry like spending spree was weird at, when it happened, and it. it Jonah Jones, Jonah Smith did nothing with the Pats. So they get a seventh round pick, uh, and then you start to ask, "Well, I, Falcons just got Jonah Smith. What about Arthur Smith? A reunion there? What about Kyle Pitts? Is he still like? Is he somebody that's floating out there? I don't know. I mean, he had one touchdown for the Patriots. Not that touchdowns are everything, but that how was many, one. Of how the, many touchdowns does he, Kyle Pitts have in two years with the Falcons? Three. You know what? It's tough as tight ends coming into the league. That position <laughs> when you are, are you? <laughs> when you're who is a this person tight end. Is this Elizabeth Banks like at the Oscars, really like right before she tests positive for COVID? <laughs> it's like uh, Johnu Smith. I don't understand what happened. I don't understand what happened to Johnu Smith. I used to love him with the Titans, so he'll be a perfect second tight end, not asked to do too much. What is uh, the what, what's Kyle that Pitt. new show? On he was Peacock? so bad for the Patriots. So bad. I'm still trying to figure out what Colleen was doing there. No, a who's few the minutes ago. who's the actress <laughs> in the show where she throat. plays like an amateur detective? It's very hot right now on Peacock. Grave Digger. <sighs> Man, tough, that's tough. tough. That you know what? Tough that's tough for Grave for, Digger. <laughs> that's also tough for Dan. Uh, <laughs> Natasha Leone. Yes, Natasha Leone. What's the name of the show? I mean, yeah. you guys don't know this. Poker Nancy face. Drew. Poker I, got, face. I was oh. with you. Excellent show. But Everyone like you, should watch I it. Didn't have Natasha's <laughs> name on the top of it. For some reason, Poker Face. I can't. I can't like lock in that name. That was very Leone esque. Yeah. <laughs> I love. I, Natasha I looked to my right. I was like, "What is going on? Who is talking to me?" I didn't hate it. You know the tight end position. I didn't hate it. It was just a little. Jarring. Uh, all right. Odds and ends. Hit it, Connie. Ooh, okay. Um, the singing I, part. like the part Do where I you, get music? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> odds and ends. Odds and ends. Hey, everybody. Tell your friends. It's odds and ends. Whoa. That's amazing. Did you just... Did you double track her vocal there? She was no. harmonizing with herself because the last time she did it, she nailed it so perfectly that, that I awesome. clipped it. Yeah, wow. I thought it was just like some type well, you know of you weird need to do echo. Next time, like, you gotta yourself. There. You gotta sing in a different key next time, so you can harmonize with yourself. Ooh. Good, All right, Graver, good send producer me that. work, Dan. Send me that yeah. so I can practice. Actually, Graver, different next keys. time, play the one of her harmonizing with herself, <laughs> until we can have three Colleen. It'll be a choir we're, soon. we're just gonna keep building Colleen's. <laughs> like I'm not even joking. Every yeah. one, and we're gonna get it till it's basically a full choir. That's a noble quest. I like that. I love this. What All right, hit it. Eight o'clock delight. <laughs> The Texans signed Case Keenum, formerly of the Bills, uh, so he is going to be a backup there when they get their new quarterback. The Bucks will trade or cut Shaq Mason. Keep an eye on his market. Uh, the Browns signed Agbo Okoronkwo. Okoronkwo. Okoronkwo, 12.5 million guaranteed. 
There you go, Marky. The Bengals bring back Jermaine Pratt on a two-year deal. Connor McGovern uh, leaves the Jets for the Bills. Adds to their line. Uh, Matt Milano gets a new deal from the Bills. Sterling Shepard back to the Giants on a one-year deal. We'll see if that ever becomes anything. Odell works out for a bunch of teams. He's reportedly looking for $20 million. Good luck. Uh, the so Jets, as we said, <laughs> uh, re-signed Quincy Williams. And the Lions bring back Isaiah Bugs. I will tell you one little thing. I was talking to Greg that, like, if you go back to the early days of our show when Case Keenum was a Texan mm-hmm. and had a couple spicy spot starts here and there, and that was oh Chris Wessling favorite for just how aggressive he was. You know, didn't think he was a perfect quarterback, but he would talk about letting your uh, Case Keenum flag fly. And now he's back in Houston, and that uh, made me think of Chris. They call it freak flag fly. It was your Keenum. It was your flag. Case Keenum, Keenum freak Keenum flag. Freak. It was yeah, a freak like flag. Yeah. Case Keenum kind of reminds me. Oh, it was like that little accent on it. Of yeah. Chase Daniel a little bit, just in terms of like mm. backups. And Chase Daniel was in the green room here at work yesterday after Ooh. we finished the show. And I walked in and I was like, oh, who's this new producer in my head? And I introduced myself and I didn't catch his name. And so there's a bunch of people in the green room. I mean, <laughs> Scott Pioli, Steve White, Maurice Jones, Drew. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. What did you say your name is again? And he was like, um, Chase Daniel. The I quarterback. Like, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I just have never seen you with your helmet off. <laughs> Cool. Then just like run to your car and drive home. Yeah. Did I have the wrong Connor McGovern? Yeah, not the Jets Connor McGovern. Uh, the Cowboys Connor McGovern. Got it. My That's bad. confusing. They're both in the AFC East now. Half the of AFC the Connor East. McGoverns that were available are not still yet. available. Half of them are now signed. Mm. Oh, that's good clarity. Good clarity. It is one of the the great things about Twitter. You know, on some level, Twitter has um, changed our our minds, maybe in a negative way. But on the other hand, you can bring up this, that. this Case Keenum flag fly put it in with an at Chris Wesseling and you can find about 70 different tweets of people tweeting at Wes about <laughs> it or Wes tweeting about it and it going Uh-oh. on and on for years and years uh, all of us responding in different that things and so I, I love that good what was that, that was little good. laugh from you I uh, just I was just thinking about Chris it was freak flag it made me giggle it made me giggle like a schoolgirl, thinking about how much you loved Case Keenum well that's sweet we won't make fun of you then <laughs> <laughs> Covered. Thank you, Wes. Safe. <laughs> Wherever you are. I always um, think about that. Whenever whenever Case Keenum gets into a game and he just gets back there and then there's that one moment where he's about to get crushed and he thinks like, hmm, should I throw it out of bounds? Should I take the sack? No. Let's just throw it as hard as I can, as far as I can, and see what happens. Like, that's letting your Case Keenum flag fly. There it is. Uh, n- and now the opposite side of Twitter, which is now owned by uh, an oligarch, <laughs> um, you must remove text message two-factor authentication by March 19th or your account is shut down. Oh, I, I got that, too. I, I what are we going to do sh- about that? I don't, uh, I don't like that. What are we going to do? I guess they're going to shut my account down. Shut it down. <laughs> then do you lose, like, everything? You, like... What? Uh, the whole thing... Uh, all we were told is you need the two... Factor authentication. Trying to get you to pay for that. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I got to send this blue. upstairs. Well, or, or what I, is our company doing about it? I would say. Uh, like, I asked this question yeah. to someone who is high up in that department, and they said they'll get back to me. Well, so March 19th is six days from now. <laughs> so it looks like all, all of our Twitter accounts are going to be wiped oh. out. A race from the internet in six days. All right. That's it. Is that it? We did 90 minutes. And no Aaron Rodgers news. No, but the Giants signed a linebacker. Do we care? Would I think it's a it's a you put it in our messaging client and yes, I think it's important. Let's see. Breaking news? Not developing? Developing? Go for it, Graver. This is your time to shine. The Giants, according to Ian Rappaport, have signed former Colts linebacker Bobby Okereke. Giving them a new face in the middle of their defense. Good player. Four years, forty million with twenty-two million guaranteed. Again, I want to see uh, the details. Sometimes it's funny money. Might be a one-year deal, but wow, that's a lot of money. Greg, he plays defense. Yuck. That's not what I mean. But a lot, a lot of these off-ball linebackers uh, are getting a lot of money on day one because there's not many other positions out there. They've needed that position for a long time. They've been a disaster there. Giants need to get better. They're really going to make that leap, so we'll see. I like he played really well last year. He can do something there. Anything else before we uh, end today's program? And just uh, as you, I imagine, uh, could imagine, we're going to be 
all over um, your podcast outlets of choice this week. We'll have a show Monday through Thursday, and if we need to drop a Friday pod, we're going to do it. That's no commitment. more Oscar parties to worry about. What if, clear. No, what about it's, it's, uh, it's if past. we need to drop a like Monday late night because Rogers just wants to give a big middle finger to the uh, media establishment? What do you hmm. What do you think? I'm here. I'm ready. Let's do it. To be determined. <laughs> TBD. What about you, Connie? You've said it all. Yeah, that's Is it. Is there more to say, perhaps? No, not if I said it all. That's it. It's good it's self-control. Time, it's time to get out of here. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Shall we? Uh, like the yes. edibles just hit, so. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go. Mark's like, I've been waiting all weekend. Now it's finally my time. <laughs> well, no, apparently not, because we're going to do an Aaron Rodgers show in four hours or something. Heed the call. <laughs> 